So just like most things today, satellites rely on computers and, and software and other things like that. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how some of the computer systems for a satellite might actually work. So first of all, what does the computers look like in a spacecraft? Well, they're embedded computers of some kind. Uh, on the left, you have a Raspberry Pi. This has actually been used for a few low-end CubeSats, but it's not typically what we use for satellites. Obviously, it's very, very low-end. On the right, you have a much more higher-end processor. I think this came from the Hubble Space Telescope. This is a processing unit that was used there, and it's kind of hard to see, but uh, they vary considerably. But they'll they'll usually be some kind of printed circuit board similar to the Raspberry Pi, although uh, much more protected, uh, especially against radiation. You may have launch a Raspberry Pi, but it'll have some radiation shielding. So one of the biggest concerns, as I just mentioned, was was radiation. Now, it uh, can affect a satellite in a number of different ways. Um, one of them is, is it can have some long-term effects, and those are really hard to protect against, but long-term electronics will degrade with respect to with uh, radiation hits, and so they'll, they'll slowly stop working, and that can cause all kinds of interesting difficulties, but it is manageable if you use the right technique. Another one's a little bit more insidious. So we have a high energy photon of some kind, maybe X-ray, gamma ray. This is a radiation detector, but the same thing kind of happens in, in actual electronics. So it will hit the skin of the spacecraft and eventually it'll be converted into an electron. When it hits an electron, it'll hit some connecting pins on the spacecraft and it can cause all kinds of interesting things from a little power zap to more interesting effects. Now, a couple of the more commonly won events are called single event latch up and single event upsets. Upsets are very common. Uh, basically, you have some computer signal, it's a bunch of zeros and ones. Well, it hits this particular bit and it changes that bit from a one to a zero or a zero to a one. And that can cause all kinds of problems. You'll have the wrong answer on, on the spacecraft. And uh, particularly, this is a problem for long-term memory, because if you don't have the long-term memory done correctly, then who knows what'll happen. So the way that you can, there's a couple of ways to overcome this. One of the most common ways is you have a voting system. For every single segment of memory that you have, you actually have it in triplicate. And so you send the same thing to each one of the three blocks of memory, and then when you go to read the memory, you read it out and you'll have your new answer. And you can either feed that back in to periodically make sure that the, the memory is correct or else you can use that for what you need to or you can update the memory as you need to. This is a common lower end way to manage the memory on a spacecraft because you don't want to be losing the, the value that can come from there, obviously. And uh, you can do the same thing for a CPU. Now, for lower end systems, they usually don't use this for the CPU. They'll put some kind of radiation protection against it, but if it has an issue, it has an issue. Um, another thing to keep in mind is uh, if you have a single event latch up, you might have to do a hard reset. Doing hard resets, you do them often enough on your computer or your phone, they get stuck into some state, and you just have to turn it off and turn it back on. Well, the satellites occasionally have to do that too, and so they design the software in such a way that that will work relatively easily. So as far as the software goes, the second issue is, and we kind of hinted at it just a moment ago, you can't update the software. Well, I, you can't actually physically turn off the software. If the software to reset a box doesn't work, then you can't do anything. If the software to update the software doesn't work, then you're stuck. You can't do any kind of these, these things that you can do when you have the actual hands-on hardware. So there are two different software designs that are, are typically used. One is, is you load into a low-level software. This low-level software will 
have everything that you absolutely need and nothing else. So it will have the uh, communication to the ground. It will have the power maybe to control some relays or maybe maybe not even that. Um, make sure that there's power going into the batteries, but maybe not manage it super carefully. And a number of other different systems just to kind of give it something to, to do. Um, it'll also have the ability to write software into the next block, and it'll have the ability to load the, the next block. And the, the final block, this is the software that you can update in flight. Now, if it happens that you go and you upload a software and maybe you had a corrupt build or something that doesn't work, then you're loaded into this state where you can at least update the software correctly. And I have actually seen this happen a few times where this block of software saved the satellite that it wasn't updated. And it's gold because um, it's considered a golden record. You cannot change this on, on flight. Um, sometimes you will have hardware protection that will prevent you from ever doing this. And other times they just make it very difficult to do in the software. But typically you don't ever want to touch this on orbit if you can get away with it. The second way is a little bit more robust. You have a side A and a side B. Side A will typically uh, be similar to this, this MON. It's typically called MON2. Usually there's a very little simple block that will load MON1 that will load MON2. And then from MON2, you go into MON3. I don't exactly know why they have the little bootloader, but that's how it tends to work. Anyways, okay. So you have this golden image and it will load in uh, and be able to control your basic functions just like this, this piece of software will be able to do. But... Um, it will typically not be loaded. Your updatable software will be the one on the right. Now, it's a little more common to be able to update the, the, this image, the golden image here, than it is in this design on the left. But it's still, you, generally speaking, you don't want to do it because it's a huge risk to the satellite for you to, to actually update this. So... Um, what you'll do is you'll have a little bootloader that will load the other image. So if you started to load into this, the image on the left, then you'll load onto the image on the right and vice versa, and you can switch between the two. But it's important to toggle, so that way if you can't load your new image, then you could go back to the golden image, so that way you're, you're safe. And so this is the two common designs that are done to help prevent or help ensure that you can update software. Anyways, that's all I have for now. Let me know whatever questions you guys have about basic software design for satellites and how it differs from a typical embedded system on the ground. Uh, it's very important that they have a lifetime ability because these things run 24 seven and you can't actually go physically update it. So it's really, really important for these to work very well. Um, thanks much for joining me on this journey and until next time, keep on tracking. We will see you next time.